Here's the, here's the problem with waiving deductibles. Besides the legal aspect, you bring a guy or a gal into your company, you're training them to be a salesperson. You want them to do things the way you want them to do it. And then the first thing you teach them is, here's how to break the rules and the reason why you don't need to follow the rules that are legal. But you gotta follow my rules, just not those rules. It doesn't make any sense. They're not gonna follow your rules either. Have you ever waived deductibles when you sell rules? I did. When I, when I first got started in this industry, my first day of training, the two things I learned was, this is how you waive a deductible, and the adjuster is the enemy. That's the first two things I learned. Does AFCA roofing waive deductibles? No. No. Why no. waiving deductible in Texas is such a big problem uh, for the industry, such a big talk, mm -hmm. so much hate, why there's so many contractors who do waive, and mm -hmm. so many guys like you who absolutely uh, the, refuse the, to waive them. Uh, the true answer is complicated, but I would say the biggest reason people waive deductibles in Texas is because that's what they were taught. We all learned from somebody else. They were pioneers in this industry in the late 90s. Almost every roofing company has started, been started by someone who used to work for one of those companies or someone else who started their company. Like it's like, it's like a reverse pyramid. You know, there was two or three companies down here and then the next hundred all were people that worked there. The next thousand were all people that worked there. It, we literally just learned it that way. It's what I was taught. I didn't know there was anything wrong with it. It took me a few months to figure out, oh, I don't, this doesn't really feel right. I think I'm actually it, not doing the right is thing. Is it fair to say that now the mechanism that those companies, that pyramid, you know, put in place, it's almost irreversible because so many homeowners are used to it? And it's my, not, the market no, it's is not. Ruined? No, I completely disagree with that. Because we, we collect deductibles every day from people who said, I'm not paying my deductible. So it can be done in Texas? Oh, absolutely it can be done. All it just takes is people wanting to change. You know, whether you want to implement something new in your sales so system. So you will lose business over it? Yes. If people don't understand. hundred percent. Do you lose a lot of business like that? I would say when we get into that conversation, we probably lose one in 10 or two in 10. Most of the customers, we don't end up in that conversation, but in the ones that it is an issue for them, I would, yes, we do sacrifice business over that. But at the same time, I don't mind it because if I gave in, I'd be waiving everyone's deductible or most people's deductible. So the net loss of those jobs is way greater than the net loss of one or two in 10. So it's just a smarter business move. Here's the, here's the problem with waiving deductibles. Besides the legal aspect, you bring a guy or a gal into your company, you're training them to be a salesperson. You want them to do things the way you want them to do it. And then the first thing you teach them is, here's how to break the rules and the reason why you don't need to follow the rules that are legal. But you gotta follow my rules, just not those rules. It doesn't make any sense. They're not gonna follow your rules either. They're a part of an industry and a, and a, a movement and a system of everyday operating that breaks the rules. They're not gonna be great employees. If you're literally teaching them, you don't have to follow the insurance carrier's rules or the state's rules in this state, we're gonna circumvent those rules. You don't think they're gonna circumvent your production rules? They're not going to, you think they're going to fill out their paperwork right and take all the right photos? You think they're not going That's to give away point. some? You're teaching them from day one, don't follow the rules. It's a terrible idea. And it, it, it begins a culture, it, down, it begins a cultural slide. And then you end up wrestling with salespeople that you're always trying to get to do the thing you've asked them to do. And what most companies do, especially if they're any size, they eventually just give up asking. And they, like, they, re, they have like base requirements. Just give me X, Y, and Z. Just give me a paper contract and an address and some pictures and I'll figure the rest out and they start a production department and they get their salespeople as far away as they can from the rest of the process because they don't do anything right, they don't, they don't follow any systems, they don't follow any processes and they think it's because salespeople can't do that. I just want my salespeople selling. The reason they're not doing it is because you taught them right from the beginning, you don't have to follow the rules. I just think that's a terrible way to start someone's professional experience by teaching them how to shortcut stuff, you know? And so I think there's a cultural issue in there. Then there's a mindset change. I remember making the change myself. What I started doing is instead of giving away the whole deductible, I gave away half the deductible. This is me being brutally honest. This is my personal journey from going from waving every day. I mean, I would tell people in my pitch, you don't have to pay your deductible. I didn't even ask them for it. I thought a selling point was that the roof was gonna be free to them, you know? And so I started trying to ask for half. And I remember like I was nervous the first like 10 times I asked for it because I thought no one's ever gonna pay this. No one's ever gonna give me this money. Um, and I didn't really feel good about it because my motivation at that point was to make more money. It wasn't actually to do the right thing. It was just to make more money. But I still tried it because it was the smart thing to do. And I was shocked when people were paying it, you know? And then I thought, okay, 
another one of the guys in my company, that company I worked at didn't collect money up front. And so another one of my, one of the guys that worked there started saying, you know what, I'm going to try to collect all the money up front. I'm going to try to collect hundred percent of the money up front and just see how many customers give it to me. I was totally surprised. There was a ton of people that would just give him their entire amount, even when they haven't received insurance proceeds, they'd write him a check for the whole job before they even had their second check. I'm like, I just started realizing that the mindset was with mine. It wasn't the customers. They were going to go with mine and I could lead the customer in that way. And then I started coming across the information. I remember the first day I read something that waiving deductibles was illegal. And I was like, oh, I was like, dang it. I already felt bad about trying to get roofs approved that really just didn't have any damage at all. That already didn't sit right with me. And so I'd stop doing that. It had to have at least some damage. Even if it was nominal, I'd let the adjuster decide, but I just didn't want to try to fight over roofs that I didn't think were damaged, you know? And then I, then I remember reading that waiving deductibles was actually illegal. And I was like, oh, dude, that's just not the way that I want to operate. That's not the way I want to make my living. And so it still took me, truthfully, it probably took me three to six months to really get to where I had my own firm line where I just wouldn't eat people's deductibles. And everybody in my company were like, dude, how do you get people to pay their deductibles? I'm like, dude, I'll give them an option. I just don't want to eat deductibles anymore. That's not how I want to make my living. I just don't want to do that. And so I was definitely losing more business at that time when it was just me by myself in a company that ate deductibles when I wasn't doing it. Uh, I had guys in my own company steal customers for me because they thought they thought I was hurting the customer by taking the deductible when I didn't need to. And as I grew out of that company and into this one, in the beginning, I'm trying to think if we ate anyone's deductibles in the beginning. In the beginning here, we did um, $500 sign bonuses where we put a sign in the yard and we let them have $500 off the deductible. And I'd heard not through real research that that was allowed and there was some little memo somewhere on a you know department of insurance memorandum or something that mentioned it and i thought oh it's okay and then i just realized you should driving is the same thing almost. basically yeah and i did but i didn't know that i was like working through my process of understanding sure. and when i really came to the realization that i was still circumventing the law and the policy and then here I am, on the other hand, trying to, to hold insurance companies accountable to their policy like every damn day. And then over here, I'm doing the thing where I'm trying to get yeah, around the policy. Progress. Yeah, I just, I just said, no more, no more. Once I really realized it, I just said, yeah, we're, we're being hypocritical. We're saying one thing and doing another. We need more gonna... of us to realize it. Yeah. Um, I think it's the same shift, mental shift, about pricing we charge too. Oh, totally. I see a lot of guys who just like charge three hundred dollars a square mm -hmm. in Chicago because that's what they've been doing for ten years. Right, right. You know, we have trucks, phones, everything. You know, three hundred percent increases. Like you pay more for gas, you yeah, pay yeah. more for trucks, you pay more for accessories, sure. you pay more for shingles every year, but yet your price stay there because that's what we've been charging. No, right, right. You know, you can rate, increase your price because it's in your head. Absolutely. I would like to finish this video with a personal message to both homeowners and contractors and finish it in my personal take on deductibles. I know we've talked a lot about deductibles on our channel in the past and I want you to think about two things. One is what deductible really is and where the money is going and also about failure rate in the roofing industry. In about five years, 80% of all roofing contractors around will be out of business. And as an industry observer, as someone who watches industry very closely, I'm here to tell you that the failure rate between contractors who do uh, wave deductibles are much higher than failure rate between contractors who collect deductibles. So if you're the homeowner and you have those two options right now, I want you to ask yourself why this company is willing to cut a corner and waive the deductible and one other company is absolutely refusing to do so. Companies like AFCO, um, they do things right. And the money that they collect don't go to owner's pocket. A lot of times it goes you know, to bonuses. They offer nicer things to their employees. Sometimes they offer benefits like health insurance benefits. And uh, most of the time companies who waive the deductibles cannot afford anything. They're paper contractors usually they pay commissions to the sales guys, they pay rates 
to um, guys who install the jobs, but they can't afford nothing above that. So they're not really roofing businesses most of the time. They simply sign a contract with you, find somebody to do the job. They don't take care of those employees. And most of the time, they're not gonna be in business. And we don't want you to invest in it. Please comment below if you have paid deductible last time when you did the job. Comment below if you're one of those contractors who will always, always collect deductibles. We want to know who you are. I want to personally reply to you and see how you do it and how many people are roofing businesses in your area actually waive the deductible and how hard it is for you to collect it. Please let me know. I read all my comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Engage, like, subscribe if you like our content.